Mexican restaurant, I and I went like this. Oh shit! <laughs> that was my actual out loud reaction. I think that's a pretty fair reaction to seeing I, him. I could not handle it. I was so fucking excited. I, I was love like, that show. "You're the best. I love it, but you're the best." <laughs> like I was such a fucking dork about it. I. But it's because it's like uh, when you love when somebody's like a part of your stuff. Like I, I spent I think two Thanksgivings watching. <laughs> I think you should leave with my family. Yeah. Like it just becomes like a part of oh, the totally. thing that you love. I you unfortunately know? say some, I, I like, you know that thing when you get something in your vocabulary and you can't take it out. Mm -hmm. It's from um, the first episode of season one uh, with baby of the year. When the judge goes, if Kathy Lee Fubbins doesn't win, I will kill myself on live TV. <laughs> right. But I just say I'm going to kill myself on live TV <laughs> just <laughs> all the time. And people are really concerned about. They're concerned. If you, do you know? You know, uh, Patty. Um, yeah, uh, Henderson is that her last name? Yeah, Patty. Patty. The f I want to say Jacobson. That's not correct. I feel like right? it's Henderson. Harrison. Harrison, close, yeah. Patty Harrison did a stand-up set Ooh. that is one of my favorite things <coughs> where she goes, she goes, um, I wrote, uh, she goes, so I had some big news. I recently wrote a song, um, not like a comedy song, like a uh -huh. real song for Dua Lipa. Oh my God. And it was like a pretty big deal. And um, she did turn it down like it's not going to get made. But would you guys mind if I sang it for you guys here tonight? That's awesome. And everyone's like, yes, yes. And so she's like, all right, here we go. I'm like really nervous. Like hit the hit it. <laughs> hit the song. And she's like, um, she's like, I just met you an hour ago. But I already know that I love you <laughs> because you are. A foot taller than me. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to me. <laughs> I would kill myself if you asked me to. <laughs> I would kill myself. I would kill myself for you. I would kill myself if you asked me to. Please tell me you would kill yourself if I killed myself too. <laughs> like, and like It just kept going. It's so fucking funny. The song is just horrifying i love it anyways i played it for a girl uh oh god then, i'm sure that like on a really date well. and then oh, the girl god. was like um oh i um I almost killed myself a year ago and i was like oh cool cool oh, cool, cool, anyways, cool. Um, should have asked should have asked that first <laughs> before i played you this um, <laughs> fuck oh yeah. yeah um did not work yeah but i love i think she's hysterical and i think uh his shows is so amazing. That's yeah. a great show, just like this one. Guys, welcome to another episode of Horror at the Store. I think it's the 50th episode? It's the 50th episode, is it? No, it's not. I think it is. <laughs> no, because we did 49 last week. It's 50 now. It's 50 now. Not 50 now. Right now. How cool. I'm your host, K K Katie Hettenbach, and we got a special human here today he's a comedian a uh, singer are you a singer you're sure, a singer you bet singer mm -hmm. uh <laughs> actor extraordinaire and if you grew up with nickelodeon you'll recognize him as gustavo rock from big time rush give it up for steven kramer glickman how are you i'm great how i'm so you? i'm so happy to be here i'm ecstatic that you're here well it's thank great you. thanks soon, for having me of course as soon as mike black was like hey oh yeah he was he he kind of put the pieces together oh a little yeah bit for me so i'm very excited i'm a big uh horror uh movie person yeah and i'm a, a big comedy uh fella love yeah. things i like basements that's you know? that's good and weird but i love that sure, for you sure sure yeah. what what are some of your Favorite horror movies. I thought you were going to say, what are some of your favorite basements? That too. I mean, what? you can do either. Um, <laughs> the uh, one in Barbarian is my favorite. That was <laughs> terrifying and great. It was hilarious. It was honestly. a hilarious movie. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The little boop on the nose. Oh, yeah. That shit was... So, Justin Long is just... What the fuck? He's, that was crazy. Uh, every time you're like, oh, it's him. And then you're like, oh... 
oh no, 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 no. Every time you see him in a horror film, you know he's just going to get mutilated. Absolutely. He he knows that we love him so much. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to bring you along this ride and then have to be the worst character possible. Absolutely. It's great. Yeah, he was a terrible person in that. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. It was great to see him play someone so terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I uh, the, the horror movies that I get freaked out by the mm. ones that like keep me right on the edge. Um, I I'd say uh, Paranormal Activity. When I saw Paranormal Activity first time, had a lot of trouble sleeping. Yeah. Um. Uh. The the one with not Hereditary Midsomner. Yeah. That was uh, that movie like played with my brain for a little while. Yeah. That, that was a good freaky one. Yeah. Um, there was a movie called Fire in the Sky when mm. I was a kid that freaked me out. It was about an alien abduction, oh, and it was supposed to be like a true story also. And and uh, there's like a scene where these aliens like cut into his eyeball. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't. I I stuff just I mm. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably the one that I saw that freaked me out the most as a kid though was Jaws three, because Jaws three took place in a pool like at like a Sea World kind of place. Okay. So then I thought in the the that Jaws was in the swimming pool in my That's, yeah at our little apartment building. I I I literally <laughs> the the light bulb that was in the wall. I mm-hmm. thought that was his eyeball, and I was like. You're like Freaked absolutely up. not. Nope. Yeah. And I would run out of the pool. I'd be. I'd see it. I'd run out of the pool. And my mom called me a chicken shit. That's uh, yeah. Fair. <laughs> I think the age of like six or seven. Yeah. She was like, stop being such a chicken shit. There's no sharks in the pool. Get the fuck back in there. Yeah. I remember being in a pool um, that had those lights and being underwater and being like, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a shark right there? So that's a different type of, oh, yeah. you know, that's, that's where I was when I was little. I get that. But, but now I can't, I know I can't, I can't swim. So yeah, that's the thing. So well, you can't swim No. at all. No. Why? Why not? Um, well my, I blame my mom for putting me in swim classes too late. Like I was in like the second and third grade and I was with, with preschools preschoolers and i simply got self-conscious she and just sank i just uh because i well because i was with like babies who were right. shitting themselves oh sure and i was like a you know a kid with who was with you know i could form words and read and stuff like that well kind of but you know and then i just never did and now they have like adult swim classes but i'm Still slightly self-conscious to do those. So here I am. Well, uh, for God's sake, <laughs> woman, get, get swimming. I, you can do it. It's also like I was, you know, I'm from Wisconsin. They don't have many pools there. Sure. So I everyone that. in LA and everyone. Where in Wisconsin, Wisconsin are you from? Uh, Ma- Madison. Oh, I've been to Madison. Yeah, it's a cool place. It's very nice. Yeah, and you're from Canada. Where, I am Canada? from Canada, where? from London, Ontario. Oh wow! Uh, where, where, I don't know where anything is. Where that's is on that? the that's closer to the East Coast. Okay. My whole family's from Montreal. Okay. I'm still a Canadian citizen. Oh, look at you. Um, never became an American. Uh, oh, no. Thought of, thought about it a few times. Yeah. My mom's uh, became my mom became a citizen, but uh, I grew up in San Diego for the most part, mm-hmm. and um. Yeah, and then moved to L.A. at like when I turned 18 wow. to go to school here and then bounced off to New York and did New York for a couple of years mm-hmm. and then back here and then back to New York. Bing, bing, bang, bing, bang, 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 <laughs> a bunch. Now I, I live here. I, yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's pretty, It's this is a weird, weird town. It is a weird town. There's yeah. there's a lot happening. Um, Kind of like this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This movie that we're gonna we, we watched uh, bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah, it was I was super into that. I liked it a lot. It was great. This is my second time seeing it, so I I saw the ending coming, and it was still more, it was more upsetting. I think the second time seeing it because I knew it was coming, and I was like, this is so it's so smart, and it's just it's like it's stupid in a good way, you know? Yeah, yeah, and. 
I, I always love a movie where it, they it feels like they kind of capture like the vibe of the age of the of the people like so ugh. Gen Z it makes me embarrassed yeah. to be part of a gen like a Gen Z generation yeah the like it it hits that Gen Z pretty damn oh hard. my god it's it's like like what what did um the one character Alice who she was the one that was just like, oh, my God. Ah. And then she'd go back and forth constantly yeah. with her opinion. She'd be like, oh, yeah. She she went to therapy. Oh, yeah. You were really trouble. Oh, my God. Da, da, da. And it's like, chill. But she's like, <laughs> oh, Greg. Yeah. My, my you know, the old guy, Greg, that I'm dating. Yeah. He's he's a Libra moon. Like, he's a good person. You can just yeah. tell because he's a Libra moon. They're, they're like, how long have you known him? And she's like, I've known him for like, I don't know, like, uh few weeks it's fine he's a great guy like get, he's a libra like don't just you know like it's so like that that kind of stuff yeah just it hit it hit a different note for me like i was like this is hysterical do you know your star sign i'm a pisces okay oh yeah i just oh my god at every time <laughs> at, what are you i'm i just know i'm a Capricorn and then I have other friends who know my entire chart and then I go hey you can answer for me because I don't know that it doesn't make sense in my brain sure but if you know if you want to tell me what my moon and star and what you know I, that's oh cool I'll, I'll it's interesting I don't know if it's real but it's interesting oh god <laughs> the, the amount of times especially here in this town where oh, like yeah. I'll say I'm a Pisces, and then someone goes, "Oh my god, that makes so much sense." You're like, "What and does that mean?" Like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> stop it! Like, you just want to stop the conversation <laughs> when it starts, but you can't. You're like, "Cool, you thank can't. you so much." Yeah, you'd be like, "All right." Okay. Is it like, wh what does that mean? Is like, you're, uh, like, I know Capricorn is like, oh, I'm very career driven, and I'm like stubborn or something. Pisces are usually like very emotionally available okay. and uh, kind of that like... That makes sense. That checks out. Yeah, that checks out. That with checks you. out. Yeah. yeah. That voice too, <laughs> that's a real voice that you hear like out in the world. Oh, yeah. Like that, like this, like back of the throat. Oh, my God. That's what we call the valley girl. And that's what, yeah, we've, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hysterical. Yeah. It's, it's. Yeah, Alice was a character, especially, uh, I love when uh, when Jordan, like, again, we're just jumping around. Uh, yeah. Jordan, she pulls out the gun and shoots her. Right. Because, you know, uh, Alice is like, not Alice, who's um, um, Amandala, the girl from The Hunger Games. Um, oh, yeah. She's like, you know, ta taunting Jordan, and then Jordan shoots Alice and then Alice is like you shot me and then they start fighting she's like right you already like stop hating me you already shot me it's just <laughs> right. like, yeah it's just that whole it's just yeah. and uh Pete Davidson is just so great he and I feel like he didn't have any actual lines he just ad-libbed everything yeah if that's what that movie feels like yeah. it feels like a lot of ad-libbing seems like that would be like a pretty fun thing to be a part of though like oh, yeah. a movie that takes place in a house like you know that just seems like a lot of fun it yeah. seems especially with a cast like that it seems like they would have a really good time it's just simple and i thought when i first saw the trailer and I know a couple other people who I was talking to about the movie, they're like, oh, Pete has to be the killer. I'm like, no. Right. They pulled a scream and murdered him right away. Or he, right away. he murdered himself. That's the big ending is that he ends up. Yeah. They, that's the, I, that, like, I know that we're kind of ruining it for oh, no, people, it's fine. but Spoiling people get it. Yeah, yeah. like uh, him uh, doing like a, trying to do some sort of like TikTok trend and slitting his own throat was... It's what happens, right? He like yeah. slits his own he's throat, he's try he's trying to he's playing with a sword because his family's just like stupid rich and they have like swords everywhere, right? And he's trying to uh, cut off the top of a um, a champagne bottle, but he starts bringing it towards himself and then like cuts his own throat accidentally right. and just dies. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That yeah, I uh, I a, a few years ago bought a crossbow. Okay. And um, um, why? 
Because, uh, be, because need. why not? There you why go. should I not own a crossbow? Awesome. And um, <laughs> at the time, I had a girlfriend, and she was like, "Do not shoot that crossbow <laughs> in the in like the house." Yeah. And I was I'm, like, "What do you think I am? Like, you think I'm some kind of idiot who would shoot a crossbow in a house?" And then the second she was gone, did it. I like loaded the crossbow up. Oh my God. And um, uh, I like set up like a little target. I had a little. I got a Rubbermaid, uh, one of those like <laughs> those uh, uh, coolers. Yeah. And I like put one of those on a, on like a wood chair, and then I put a little target on the front of the Rubbermaid, oh, and uh, lined it up, and I shot it with the crossbow, and the bolt, the the arrow, flew across the room, went through the target. Went through both sides of the Rubbermaid container, broke the back of the chair, flew out the window, and landed on the street. And then a car drove over it and broke the arrow. And I was like, my arrow! Like, not like, I could have <laughs> killed a man. Yeah. Like, I could have been the guy. I could be the guy on the podcast who murdered a man you with a crossbow. Murdered yeah. Sir, wh- why did you have a crossbow? Well, my I girlfriend made, I, was gone. Target practice, you know. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you know, God. yeah, it's it, it, it's not a good idea for me to own weapons of, of any kind. Yeah. I'm, I'm not smart enough to that's, have weapons. Probably. That's fair. That's fair. My uh, grandpa who passed away, he um, uh, had a huge gun collection and... Like, not like like Civil War guns and like, you know, like cool guns. And I was like, oh, I really want that one because that one looks cool and I'd like to have it on my wall. Oh, yeah. I would never use it. I just think that would be cool. And he was like, no, no, here, uh, here are some drawings instead because I'm a woman and he's 100. And, you know, I, I know you need to know my place as the woman. My ex came over one time and he goes, do you want a gun off the wall? And I went, are you kidding me, Grandpa? What the fuck? I know. I'm like, what the hell? And I still didn't. Come on, Grandpa. I know. And then he sold all of his guns, and I, ne- I never got one. I, but I do have his, his drawings, though. They are pretty good, but well, I wanted a gun, too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I went to um, an estate sale once out in Glendale. For, it was like a film director that cool. had died, and they had uh, they had like a estate sale for his stuff, and you, I, you walk through, and I get into the bedroom, and they've got props and movie things and scripts and all sorts mm-hmm. of stuff. And I walk in the bedroom, and there's a like a prop shotgun Ooh. laying against against the wall and I was like I was like oh that's kind of a fun thing to to buy and so I pick up this big prop shotgun and it's very very heavy yeah. and I'm like well this thing is way too heavy like this yeah. is stupid and I like look at it and I like aim it at the ground and like click the trigger just to see <laughs> if it makes and I was like it doesn't even make any sound yeah. like the thing doesn't you can't pull the thing back I go I don't I, I don't know what to do I go I, I go uh, I'll give the guy like 40 bucks for yeah. it so I walk up front and I go excuse me uh, guy who works here uh, how much for the prop shotgun and the guy goes um that's um that's that's uh that's not a that's not a prop that's a real gun where did you get that (laughs) and i was like in the bedroom and he goes i need you to very carefully hand that back to me because it was loaded when we got here and i go okay and i slowly hand it back to him and he goes yeah, um, this is uh, the uh, this is one of the ones that um, he had. Um, the other one is the one that he used to kill himself, which is why they're having an estate sale. Oh. And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Again." laughs> I'm gonna go outside. Yeah, so it was forty dollars for the gun. Forty though? bucks for 40? the real live shotgun in Glendale sounds awesome. This sounds cool, like cool, cool. Grade. I think that's a good. Yeah, I think it's a good deal, honestly. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I Jesus. Just, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea for us to have too many. Maybe a weapon here. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But there's people who are better at this. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, like I'm yeah. afraid that I would end up like Pete in uh in this movie. Like if I was in a if if it was my story, <laughs> most likely I would have been the guy that did a TikTok dance and stabbed myself in the face. Yes. You know. With, that's why if you have swords, you have fake swords that aren't sharp. Sure. Yeah. 
or sure. you know for fake crossbow you should get like nerf crossbows instead you're yeah, like i have a taser at home oh, why? and i'm always afraid that i'm gonna tase myself why, why do you need a taser? i don't know <laughs> why i have things okay cool things That's... just show up in my life oh my okay i love that for you <laughs> it's a weird life it's a weird life that i have a lot of a, a lot of the things i have in my home are stuff i did not i don't know where they came from or yeah. i did not buy them they just were they just arrived in the mail okay. you know weird weird it's a weird thing yeah <laughs> being on children's television for like a long time yeah. kind of does a thing where it's like companies they they want to work together mm-hmm. or you know people just go oh i've got this great thing for you and then they give you like you know, a taser or a, uh, or yeah, or they're like, like you, you work with kids. Here's yeah, this is taser. This is perfect. Like, I have a massive, like, a massive amount of swords in my home, way too many. Okay. Like, it's, it's, how many a, is too many? 14, 16. Okay. That's yeah. too many swords. Okay. I'm like, wow. who, who am I, like, to have any, you know what I mean? I mean, it's very stupid. And then, I love that. <laughs> that's, that's also, you then you start getting into the headspace of like, of like, oh, like, do I, do I need like a, like what do I need a bulletproof vest for some reason? I don't have one, but I. But then you go, should I have one? And you yeah. go, I, probably not. You're like yeah, but maybe. See, I have a similar thing, but it's with like random. Like I was on. Uh, I'm a big uh, fi- Facebook Marketplace person. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You get weird stuff on there. I found a dinosaur chicken nugget pillow. Hmm. So of course mm, I bought mm-hmm. every single one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't need that, but I have it. I don't have a place to put it. Yeah, but yeah, that's like the fun of of growing up. Like you can kind of like one of my. I have a guest bathroom that is McDonald's themed. Okay. And it's <laughs> it's painted bright red. The walls, the ceiling, everything. I have nice. a giant light up M on the wall that's from fantastic. the front of a an old McDonald's. <laughs> I've got a giant Ronald McDonald head sitting nope. on the counter. When people walk in and they see it, they immediately want to leave which is great for me yeah because then uh, they don't they they're not there anymore yeah yeah like it's nice to have something <laughs> where guests don't feel comfortable yeah because i don't want people to stay for too long yeah. like i want people to come visit and hang out with yeah. me and but then, then as at soon some as point, they need to go to the bathroom yeah then they like, see that and they go I'm, you know I, what yeah and they go, you're like i should I'll poop at home, honestly. Yeah, this I, don't is, to... I don't need Ronald McDonald staring at my face while I'm pooping. I don't need to no, That's fine. That's terrifying. Yeah, the, there was a family that I uh, dog sat for, and they had an an OG print of like one of the Ronald McDonald uh, like campaign thing. Terrifying. Oh yeah, because he's old and he's he's creepy. He's clowns. Clowns are scary. Clowns are scary. Clowns are scary. scary. I wonder when clowns started being scary. You think it was? It was. I think it was always. I think it was, it was poltergeist. A... Poltergeist. That's a scary clown. When movie. did that? An it. That well, yeah, the the OG nice. it. That's. Yeah, like I wonder who was first scared of clowns. Like when that first really started. That's a good question. Me. You. It was me. It started with You're me. Like, clowns are creepy. They are. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful there wasn't a clown. I always. I would. You know, like this movie. I've always felt like there was going to be like something like a clown or something weird Mm -hmm. that you would see but it's real it's not it's so like i feel like the ending is a big we just went through all that (laughs) for for nothing for nothing for nothing like they all literally like this movie is them just a terrible friend group going insane yeah and just killing each other off one by one I, i feel like there are times in life where you I don't know if you've ever been a part of a very bad friend group. Always, yes. Yeah, like where there's always like there's one person that you're totally cool with. Mm-hmm. Then there's always a couple people that somehow have stuck around mm-hmm. that are not great people mm-hmm. and like slowly you have to kind of cut them out and get rid of them and it's really hard to break up with friends i don't know if you've ever tried to break up with a friend it's not easy they always break up with me 
So I'm usually <laughs> I'm I'm usually the hey, we shouldn't invite her around anymore. Oh why? I don't know. She's just unhinged and doesn't have a filter and oh, I don't so know. Good. Yeah, it's yeah. She says she's going to kill herself a lot. I don't know. On live TV, <laughs> right. that's a oh, whole thing. That's a problem. That's a, you know, I got to, I got to, you got to know your audience, but I don't really <laughs> care anymore. I'm like, you either like it or you don't. And uh, I'm not going to kill myself on live TV yet. Um, <laughs> what was the age difference you think between the, the old guy and the girl? What do you think the, how old do you think that I guy I feel was? like they were 21, 22. Like all the all the, like the 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 kiddos, yeah. And then he, I feel like he had to be like mid forties, mid forties. Mid forties, I feel like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe more. Maybe less. Maybe. I don't know. I can never tell how, how old people are. Yeah. Like, I always think people are, are my age or like a little bit older. But I'm like, oh, you're my age. And they're like, no, I'm. I'm someone was like, oh, I'm 60. I'm like, I thought you were literally 30 because we were relating so hard. Sure. I mean, not that the ma- and age is just a thing, but, you know, that's just Dude, I'm always like, I on, don't know how old people are. On the first day of Big Time Rush, on our first day of filming, the, the creator of the show walked up to me and he said, uh, this is 100 percent true. He walked up and he said, uh, hey, um, I just want you to know, I just think it's awesome that we were able to find a funny 40 year old that had not been discovered yet. And I went, I'm 28. You were 28. And he, and he looked at me and he went, he went, wow, you look like shit. And then he walked away. That you was, were 28. I was 28 when we shot the original pilot. Oh my God. And then, uh, I turned 30 on the set of the show, uh, oh during, uh, during the first season. Because then we had a year between first episode and the show actually getting picked up. How old were the boys? The boys, like the youngest was, I think Kendall was maybe seventeen when we started. Okay, but most of them were were over eighteen. Dang. Because uh, except for, I mean, yeah, the the little girl that was on the show, she was yeah. in school during the day. Like we had a an onset teacher, but the kids, uh, the the boys were the dogs the were all. Uh, a, like 19 to 21, okay. somewhere in there. I think Carlos was the oldest okay. of them. Interesting. I would have thought he was the youngest. Yeah. I don't know. He's the shortest. That's you know. And you know what? That, that's a weird thing is that I also assume that if you're taller than me, you're older than me. That's funny. Um, <laughs> that's very funny. I am 5'5 five five on a good day. So <laughs> I have scoliosis. So t- sometimes it's five, four and a half. But yeah. usually, usually five five. Um, but yeah, no, I like saw someone who was like six nine, and I was like, "Oh, you're." I'm like, "Oh, you're you're literally like nineteen. Cool, awesome. I'm I'm older than you. Oh, that's I hate that. That's I hate that. Funny. Yeah, that's hate funny. that. But yeah, and how how tall is Pete Davidson? He just towers over everybody. I think he's. I have no idea. Fact check. How tall is Pete? Jordan? How tall is Pete? He is at six, six four. I think he's only six two. But what in L.A. he's a giant. Yeah, that's a big. He's a big. He's a big old boy. He's a big old boy. He's a big boy. Yeah. He is six six one and three quarters. Oh. That's very specific. That is very specific. Yeah, Someone's really like, is. we gotta, we gotta. The girls need to know this. Oh yeah, for sure. They gotta know this. I know. Um. When we were doing uh, Big Time Rush, uh, Carlos and all of us went and saw Paranormal Activity. Oh, God. Uh, we went to like an early screening of it mm-hmm. because Paramount, we're, that's where we shot our show. Paramount is who made the the movie. Mm-hmm. And um, Carlos was like terrified about the movie. Like he thought it was really, really, really scary. And then uh, we had a power outage at uh, Paramount. Oh. So all the lights were out. And so they told us that we could all go home early. So I hid in Carlos's room. Jesus. And when he came into his room to like pack his stuff up, I jumped out and scared him. And then he ran away uh, screaming, uh, you know, I'm afraid of demons. And like ran, <laughs> <laughs> ran away, uh, which is a weird, yeah, weird thing. Yeah. But there, there was a lot of, you know, uh, everybody fucking with each other. Yeah, that, 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 that seems like a show that people would do that. Like, oh, I yeah. feel like I almost want a, like, 
BTR reunion, but like a horror film. Oh, I would love that. That'd be so fun. Yeah, where everybody slowly gets Just taken out. Taken out, and you're like, who's yeah. the killer? It's Katie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be a great idea. Yeah. Let's pitch that. She's, Let's do that. I mean, she's the mastermind, you know? She was the definitely the smartest and like most talented of everybody there <laughs> like we all kind of knew that like yeah. she was just a killer like yeah like they the killer, fought so actually. hard to get her for that show because yeah. we had um what happened was we had somebody else playing the the sister mm-hmm. and then a disney came in mm-hmm. uh to we were nickelodeon so disney came in and they were like hey here's a bunch of money to not work for nickelodeon and then they pulled uh, pulled the girl some yeah. that girl out then we they got another girl and uh before she could even make it to the stage disney had done the exact same thing and been like here's a bunch of money do not work for nickelodeon and tried to like get her and then um sierra bravo yeah. came over and they tried and they did not they were not successful yeah. and we were able to get her and she was fantastic oh, she's she was awesome. just a super talent and she's gone out she just played tom holland's girlfriend in a in a movie Good for her. and awesome. uh yeah she's a bad motherfucker like she's super talented and very very nice yeah very very cool that's yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. yeah she's adorable I, yeah. that's show was my childhood that's so funny. It's it's wild. No, it's wild. It's like saw you at Comic Con was like, oh my god. Well, it's so Just funny too. I mean, this, <laughs> like the comedy store. I I worked at the comedy store as the doorman and the phone I operator. I didn't know that. That's so cool. When you're like, my, my name's on the side of the building. I'm like, there. Are, I haven't. There's there are a lot of names on this building, but I did not know that you were one of them. And oh awesome. yeah, yeah. That's like one of the proudest things that exists in my life. For sure. It is the thing I take people to, to like be like, I was here, you know, (laughs) like, because, you know, like, it's such a difficult, like such a, it was such a tricky thing getting to be, to become a paid regular. Yeah. At like this club is a different story at like the improv or the factory, but like the comedy store, like having to showcase for Mitzi, like I showcased for Mitzi right, but like. Literally right before uh, she was done showcasing mm-hmm. people, and then they moved on and changed things up. But like, it it was me and Owen Smith were uh, oh. the ones that came up, came in together, and then we were part of the same time period as like Eric Andre okay. and Hannibal and stuff like that. So those guys were they showcased the week or two before or three weeks I think b- okay. before us. So yeah, it was a cra- that was a crazy time period, awesome. you know. And like such a pride like such something to be proud of of like working here and being a doorman standing in the rain, you know, mm-hmm. you know, just parking people's cars. I was the worst parking attendant. They did not <laughs> let me do that for very long. They let me be a bouncer at the front door yeah, for a while. Yeah, that, that um, makes more sense. <laughs> I, I like yeah. And then I was also responsible for um two of the like two of the weirdest things to have happen here, which was uh I I was the person who called Michael Richards to tell him he was no longer allowed to perform oh at the my. store uh, after his big, giant, horrible incident. And then uh, I was also the one when Joe Rogan had his incident with mm-hmm. um, uh, Men- Mencia. That was m- my job to call him and tell him he wasn't allowed to perform at the club, which was God. not a great situation to be. Yeah, that's. A, uh, I would they, not want to do that they, call. They literally made me like a new comic, like <laughs> call like a giant and tell him that he could not. Not a great, not a great way to meet Joe Rogan. Yeah, um, like, hey, buddy. Um, <laughs> hey, pal. Uh, <laughs> awkward. Got some um, news to share. But it was like, I mean, it was a kind of an epic time, and it was before everything kind of changed. And yeah. the club got really nice, so. The club was like a dark, it was a very dark and scary yeah. place at the time. And the club now has like such happiness and like lightness to yeah, it. Yeah, I've heard that everyone's like, oh, you're like, you're part of the family now. Like you work here. Like, and I'm oh, like, yeah. family? I'm like, that's, that's so nice. And then I was like, yeah, there's like, it's a good, it's a good energy now. I'm like, oh, 
Oh. I, I feel like it's always had a good energy for me, but that's just from an outside perspective. But when I was here, I I worked here before Hinchcliffe came mm-hmm. along. So there were comics here that would like throw ice at you while you were on stage during your set or um pull their um uh, uh penises out a- on penises? stage and I think put still, it I think and they put it happens i think they put Bobby it through Lee the curtain that. while you'd be performing so you'd nice. be performing and they would just be a penis behind you <laughs> sticking <laughs> through a curtain and then i got like i went from being the doorman here to starring on broadway in shrek the musical that's that's amazing that i didn't the, know that's so cool that was the bit my big leap out so everyone was like wait what like it was like a very strange <laughs> Strange, like jump, uh, and and then when I came back, it was kind of the vibe had changed, and yeah. then I got big time rush, and then that changed the vibe again, and like yeah. we got um, Jeff Ross to come and be on big time. Yes, rush. I just saw a clip Bobby of that. Lee. Yes, and- I. That's the funniest. I was when I was rewatching it, I was like, is that is that Bobby Lee as the neighbor? I was yeah. like, what the hell? So oh, I, yeah. he was so funny on he, the show. Oh, he's hysterical. But I'm like, I'm gonna, if, if ever he's on this podcast, I will only introduce him as the neighbor from Big Time Rush. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be, like, you know, knock him down a little bit and it'll be funny. You should totally do that. Oh, it's though. funny. I yeah. love it. It's so, it's hilarious. He's just like a throwaway character that's just like in a thing. And then he, he did a great job. It was so funny, but it's he great. He was hysterical. Oh, he's good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, back to the movie. Yes, back, back to the to movie. The movie. We got on a tangent. No, it's okay. Oh my goodness. Um where were we? Uh yeah, this it's like one big uh sleepover that just has gone yeah. wrong. A hurricane party and it's just gone haywire. I love it. Bodies, 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 man. It's just. that's that's what that's what we're yeah, that's it's and the game. Have you ever played something like the game Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? I think so. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, it's um you uh, divvy up a piece of paper, or you can do a card. It's similar to Werewolf, um, mm. or uh, I think it's Secret Hitler. That's a that's a fun one. Um, it's, it's exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you basically um, whoever gets the piece of paper that has the the X on it is the killer. You can't tell anybody, and all they turn off all the lights, and you like r- run around the house, and if you are tapped on the shoulder you have just been murdered and you have to like pretend like you're dead. And then whoever finds your body goes bodies, bodies, bodies. And then they have to uh, uh, interview the whole town. It's basically like um, the video game, that game that people were playing. What's that game that Is people were playing? The, the where you have the little werewolf. One? Yeah. No, there's like a little video game that everybody was playing where you run around, you don't know who the killer is. And it was these little like, um, oh, forget it. Hmm. Um, no, it, it sounds for. I was like, my the, sister was playing it a lot. It was like the, they had like little hoods. They were like little creatures. Slender Man, not Slender Man. Five Nights at Freddy's. What? I don't know any other uh, murder games. I played Mario Kart and uh, Barbie. Sure, and also Sims. So that's about it. Yeah, yeah. And it was something that was on your phone. Okay, and I remember uh, hearing that it was a very, uh, the, but it was similar. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is. <laughs> Those those kinds of games uh, are, uh, I mean, what a great way to, uh, like, what a great line into a horror movie. Yeah, it's, you know? it's ridiculous. And the, the amount of drugs these kids did, like, I know they're, like, r- rich, rich, oh. but, like, just Coke, Molly, Xanax. Like, they're like, oh, there's there might be a killer chasing us. Do you want a Xanax? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Right. Like, you're already coked out of your mind and on Molly. Anna smoked a bunch of weed. I'm like, are you? How are you alive? Like, oh. they all weigh, like, Dude, the, the drugs that people do, like, the, the, the drugs that you young people do. Yeah, literally. Holy God. There was a girl that I was, uh, we were having dinner, and this girl goes, um, Oh, just letting you know, if I throw up after dinner, it's not because I'm bulimic. It's because I'm addicted to smoking Percocet. Jesus Christ. And I was like, 
Wait, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> You're smoking Percocet? And she was like, yeah, but like, I'm trying to get off of it. But like, it's really hard. I'm trying to get sober. And I was like, well, how? when's the last time you smoked it? And she was like, I don't know, like four hours ago. And I was like... Cool, 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 cool. Oh, cool. This, so check. Um, yeah, I gotta get that. So fun. much. You can That's how bad dating in Los Angeles is. We went out again. Oh. That's bad, right? That's bad. That's because she was a Pisces. She was a. She had a, she had a Libra moon. Oh, it's bad. It was a vet. There's a girl that I know who told me that she had taken this thing called Bufo. What? And she was like, she was like, oh yeah, I took this drug, uh, this thing called Bufo. I go, how was that? She goes, oh my god, it was amazing. I threw up for like an hour and a half straight, oh and god. then I just felt so good. <laughs> and I was like, that is food poisoning. Like that's not. That's you're not. You're not, not supposed good. to throw up that much. Yeah. You know? This that's is not, bad. This yeah. is very bad. I, I mean, the drugs. Uh, I, I'm friends with a girl who went uh, to Mexico and brought drugs to Mexico. Like the 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 things that 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 y'all are doing these days. Yeah. Like I'm, uh, yeah. This is this. I is smoke what... a tiny bit of weed every yeah. once in a while. I'm good. I drink a little bit, but yeah, like, oof, yeah. I don't understand. I I don't get it. I... It's a lot. I this is this is where I uh, I I although I am Gen Z this is where I don't I I identify um, as one I smoke a little bit of weed drink barely honestly barely for them both I I people think I'm on drugs and I'm sober right um, I've been accused of that since I was like little even by my parents they're like are you on something i'm just I'm like i'm just happy to be here and they're like that's well you've ended up at the right place yes yeah <laughs> because yeah. this is the <laughs> this is the place for that to for do sure drugs more drugs yes more, dr- more no, drugs no to, more be, drugs. to be i need a xanax right now yeah it <laughs> is uh i mean to this is the this is this business being in comedy being in entertainment yeah like you get to people are always like oh my god like how when you came up with that like what were you even like what were you on like when you were doing that and you're like depression no. depression yeah i was <laughs> on absolute Sa- de- sadness it's, no one's happy anxiety here. that's if what they I- say they're happy they're <laughs> fucking lying absolutely yeah so i mean you know we don't you know we're not we don't need it the, the same way but yeah. holy god sometimes the the just the stuff that people are doing. I mean, the, like that's why in this movie, like I loved that everybody was like doing Molly and snorting so, coke. So many and, lines of coke. I'm like, you're gonna die. Oh yeah. All of these kids would be dead if it weren't for them. I mean, they're obviously in the end, they're all dead. But like, spoiler alert. Yeah. They're all dead. We've already spoiled everything. It's fine. But they the amount of drugs they did would kill them first right <laughs> they, yeah they didn't have to do anything it was just i'm always blown away by that when people are like yeah i tried meth like twice it's not that big a deal and you're like you tried you're like, what i'm not curious about how that goes but thank you so much wow. i i love that journey for you i'm yeah. glad you're still here uh are you gonna keep doing it no cool should we <sighs> should we get you to rehab should we get you somewhere oh yeah concerned about you the amount of people that I've talked to who are who like on a Tuesday, they're like, I've done all these crazy, I'm doing all these things, all these crazy drugs. <laughs> and then you talk to them on Thursday and they're like, I'm in a rehab center in Utah. You're like, mm-hmm, probably that, good. Probably yeah, that good. tracks. That's, that yeah, tracks that for you. Out. I think yeah. all of these. Well, no, because one of the girls went to rehab for Coke. Right. And that's talked about a little bit. And she like uh, relapses. Well, because there are murders happening, right? Yeah, so honestly, fair. Yeah, 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 I, uh, yeah. That's breaking fair. sobriety too, because there's murders happening. You're like, I'm probably gonna die anyways. Might as well do a line, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. It, that makes, it makes perfect sense. sense. Yeah, and I don't know. They were all dumb. They just were so. D- I like. <sighs> I know this was supposed to be like the the worst friend group ever, but like they really were like the worst friend group ever, and yeah. just they just were nasty. In, I don't know. They're that's yeah, it's pretty great. It was bad. It was bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything? Any crazy scenes that you remember that you want to talk about or 
anything. Oh, the zucchini bread. She brought zucchini bread oh to a Coke party. God, that the was main so character. great. It, you know what it reminded me of? It, I, I'm so happy you brought that up. <laughs> um, I went years ago to a house party where mm. everybody was doing drugs, and I showed up with a box of popsicles. Oh, my God. You're the best. And I was like, I bought popsicles for everybody? And they were like, why? And I was like, because pop." Popsicles, popsicles are fun and my mom told me you're not supposed to show up to a party empty-handed and everyone was like what like they just, <laughs> i was the we- i was so i was just immediately oh. the weirdest guy to ever show up to a fucking house party ever <laughs> but it was like everyone else was showing up with like weed and coke and pills and you know everything like, and i was like i bought popsicles at the grocery store is that okay <laughs> like i brought diet pepsi hope hope that's okay just <laughs> they're no. like get out absolutely not get out of here i've yeah. i've done that too um my first party ever in college, um, everyone was like drinking, smoking weed. I didn't do any of it. Like I cried that night because that was like it was my first party, and I was like, I don't want to be here. I'm scared. It's mm. overwhelming. Um, I didn't know what weed was till like sophomore in high school. So like that's the kind of life I lived. Sure. Um, but I brought a brownie, just a plain brownie. And they're like, Is that like a weed brownie? I'm like, No, it's just a brownie. And they're like, Why? I'm like, If I get hungry. I have a snack. (laughs) (laughs) So now whenever I go out, I usually have like a bag of like goldfish. But, you know, yeah, everyone's like, you got goldfish? I'm like, yeah, I do. And they're like, you're fucking awesome. I'm like, I know. I'm aware. (laughs) Why you bring the snacks? She brought a zucchini bread That's to a Coke party. St- I love it. You would fit in. in I, w- I wish you were in this movie. Too. I kind of <laughs> felt like I was in the movie. You're that's like- you know, I think that's <laughs> the thing that they did. That's the best in the movie mm-hmm. is that you feel like you're attending the party. Yeah. The way it's shot and and everything like you feel the anxiety of like her, of that girl, mm-hmm. but like you really feel like you're there you're like in a party mm-hmm. in the rain hanging out you can't really leave yeah you're you know trapped. you're yeah. tr- kind of trapped in there because of this hurricane and uh and then you know as things t- start to get bad and get worse you know you're you're just you're trying to ride it out yeah. you know and yeah i really i like i really liked it for that reason that like it kept me engaged the whole time i don't know if if you're like a double screen watcher like if you watch movies holding your cell phone uh it, it if i'm if i'm at home unfortunately yeah. i am but yes. if i'm I, I, that's why i prefer to watch it in a theater yeah um, i did see this in the movie theater which people were like mm. like audibly like laughing and cackling and talking back to the screen because totally. it was just so ridiculous this time i was like Okay, I've seen this, but I'm like, this is just there's so, there's so, like some of the parts I like I knew were coming, and I was just like, it's just it's not that it's cr- it's good writing, but it makes me cringe because it's just so Gen Z, yeah, and it's like, oh, like the vegan stuff and the, yeah, the you know lactose intolerant and yeah. all the all the uh, oh, what was the the um they just kept making jokes like that because they were everyone's trying to be so woke and the one character um is like oh my mom has borderline and then they make a comment and then it goes that is so ableist of you right to us to say that yeah and, but it was just like a uh, like, I'll read you. <laughs> i have a i have a quote can i read yes go quote? yes please okay hang on i'll read you a oh quote from it because i thought it was it it this one stayed with me but i marked it because i was like Oh yeah. It's just silly. She she lied about her mom and look and being at at, a, at a, this one college just cuz she she was embarrassed. Honestly, it's the same with me not being able to swim. She yeah. was embarrassed. And honestly, it's embarrassing that I have to admit that. Hey. Her. Um you know, okay, here it is. Um wait. Okay, there's a moment where they're like, okay, the dir- okay, here it is. 
that the, oh they used uh, this was kind of like a super weird thing to like be able to shoot it mm-hmm. they uh they used uh cell phone lights yes. a lot which i thought was like like uh, the like that's how they lit the scenes was with cell phone lights yeah i saw that like, the uh the cinematographer had to teach the actors how to light themselves so they did the backlight and then they did the, they had their um their their phones on full brightness so it could do both like it could light both sides it was really interesting oh yeah okay here it <laughs> like is. the I one girl the, the one girl when she finds uh when alice finds emma dead at the, at the bottom of the stairs she literally turns her phone to her face and is like screaming like this and i'm like you consciously went oh i need to light myself you literally like i saw it oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah there's the line he uh he's a libra moon and that says a lot mm-hmm. that's that's amazing um i can't believe you're making this about you <laughs> that that's like i like the like the high point of like the murder and mm-hmm. like people getting murdered that was that's a line that i've never heard in a <laughs> horror film i can't believe you're making this about you um this this one okay this is the one that i marked though so if you could just like not escalate the situation that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> like that if you could just like not escalate the situation that would be great that is a, that that sounds like a conversation that i've yeah. had with yeah. gen z folks mm-hmm. <laughs> and um for it to be happening with dead bodies everywhere Oh my god! It's it's genius. Almost it's fucking too genius. perfect. It's too perfect. It's so good. It's, it's so good. It's we, ridiculous. We need more of this type of stuff. I we, think it's coming, but yeah, it's, yeah, comet a little bit of comedy, uh, th- w- uh with uh horror is yeah, just a wonderful thing. It's, it's one of the silly. things about Midsummer that like I didn't. The only thing about it that I did not enjoy mm-hmm. is that there wasn't a laugh. There was, it was. Well, I mean, it depends on what you, you laugh at. Yeah. I have, I, I saw it in theaters and I have not seen it since. Um, just because I'm like, I don't want to go. Th- like I saw it and I'm like, I don't want to go through that again. Yeah. It's you know, like I think re- it, Requiem for a Dream. I think it's a one thing. and done. I saw yeah. it, you know, I, I don't need to see it again. Yes. Yeah. I feel like that. I know people are saying that about the whale that yeah. just came out. We're it's like, like you, you should see it at least once and then yeah, you're good to, you're good to go. That's, yeah. That's kind of how I feel about it. Like I don't need to see bodies, bodies, bodies for a third time. I think I've, kind of have it i kind of have it i kind of got it um it's also like maybe in like 10 years when i forget it's not like the shining yeah the, like shining, the shining you can watch 25 times and you know and, and, well, and, and like the shining there's so much and... packed in there this is like it's pretty much laid out for you and there's not like hidden meanings and it's not like oh she wears the glow sticks because right that's why. no she's wearing yeah. the glow sticks because she likes glow sticks and she refuses to take them off the whole movie, a hundred percent, which is fine. You know, yeah, sometimes you gotta do that. Have you ever worked anywhere where you, that you felt was haunted or or um, scary yes. at night? Yeah, I, I yeah, I worked as a uh, a COVID compliance officer um, for the show Dave season two, and oh, wow. we were at um, good job. Thank you. It was great. That was my first job out here. I was proud. Um, but uh, we shot at the. Millennium Biltmore Hotel downtown. Ooh. And that's like over 100 years old. And uh, everything is shot there. But it's um, like th- that's the last place the Black Dahlia was like seen alive. Like she made a phone call in the lobby and then left. Um, th- hundreds of people are murdered there. Uh, there's always suicides there. So, and I like, I was like, oh, this place feels like it might be haunted. Just Googled. Millennium built more haunted. Every single floor has a certain ghost, whatever. Um, and then they have like eight subfloors. It's also where the first Oscars were held and was in the theater where the Oscars were held. Um, was like, hey guys, you guys got it. I'm going to go explore. And they're like, go. We, we, we know you. We know you like weird shit. Go. So I was like exploring, had my little f- phone recorder out was like, oh, I'm going to win the Oscar. It goes to me. Thank you. You know, then uh, left the stage 
and I was like, I'm just going to sit here and sit for like, you know, 10 minutes and see if I hear anything. If not, no big deal. No big deal. And within 30 seconds, there was a, and I literally sprinted out wow. of there, but it was in the same spot that I was just at. Ooh. So I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to leave. So yeah. 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 It was spooky. That is a spooky place. Yeah. How about you? Sure. Um, I mean, working at the store, like at being here at like two o'clock or one mm-hmm. o'clock, you know, like three o'clock in the morning, you know, th- this place has some creaks and just some creepy, there's some creepiness oh, here I mean, and there. We're, we're literally recording in the murder house, you know? Yeah. Yeah. People were like, what, strung up by their toes and stuff? In oh yeah, room? in the basement of yeah. the of the of, yeah, the store? yeah of like Ciro's basically, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This was a very is it yeah, it the vibe is not bad though. It's, it's not like, bad. I sometimes expected... you go into a place and the vibe is like ugh, like get yeah. the shivers and you're like this place is fucked. I up. will say I've been here alone a handful of times, and mm. I always feel like someone's walking down the stairs and they're not, and I it always feels like I'm not alone down here. Yeah. but it's not like a bad feeling it's just like it feels like there's always i'm like there, there's no one there weird but like it's like it's not like a scary feeling it's just the, this place is definitely haunted yeah oh 100 um i mean i remember um uh, i i'd work i'd i'd sleep in the belly room oh my god between uh the my like day shift of working here and like the night shift of working here Jeez. and it, and like sleeping in that in there you would just hear creaks and stuff yeah. from mitzi's office or from you know the stairs mm-hmm. you know come up the stairs things like that and then you'd be like hey who's there who's there and there'd be and nobody. nobody and you're like and, you're not, <laughs> and like you're not supposed to call out who's there you know yeah that's not a great idea john and i always say um i'll be right back and i'm like no you won't mm. no you won't you're gonna be dead. Don't say I'll, I'll be right back. No, you never, you yeah. never do. You um, never yeah. do. So overall, out of ten, what do you think? Bodies, bodies, bodies. I'd give it a seven. A seven, seven and a half. Wow. Like I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I'd say, like a ten for me is probably like The Shining. Yeah, that's you know. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to horror, mm-hmm. I but I think a solid seven to eight. I'd give it maybe maybe an eight. Yeah, because it was funny, mm-hmm. but it was also it kept me on the edge of my seat. And there's a lot of a lot of laughs, and there's a lot of like um, great scares yeah. too. Yeah, I mean when when they have the guy, the old guy mm-hmm. in the gym. And he's just like, and he's yeah, and he's just laying there, and they're doing the thing where they're like circling him, mm-hmm. and and you you start to get that sense that like, oh shit, are they gonna kill this guy? Yeah, you know, or is he gonna kill one of them? Mm-hmm. Like that that energy in that scene is worth the move watching the movie. Oh alone. yeah, because it you really start to feel like you're like, oh. The Gen Z hanging out with Gen Z is a great time until, until it isn't. Yeah, <laughs> and that really should be the subtitle for yes, the movie. Is, that is pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. Until they murder you, because they all think they're all paranoid that someone's out to get them. When really, it's it's them. It's them. It's yeah, them. It's them out they, to get them. We will self implode. Whoa! Yeah. Is that what they're saying? That Gen Z is going to self implode and kill ourselves off? <gasps> Wow. Wow. That's deep. Wow. Probably not. As again, that's probably the Gen Z and me being like, everything has a reason. Everything has a meaning. <laughs> right, right. It exactly. doesn't. It's just a bunch of people coked out of their mind, kill each other. Totally. Yeah. I love it. That's great. I eight. Eight? Okay, eight. Yeah. Uh seven seven point five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In you know what? I uh it's it's fun, it's silly, but it fr- frustrates the hell out of me. And especially the ending, it's just not, I know it's not a clean bow and I I do like a clean bow, but it's just so frustrating to the point of like, we just went through all of that for nothing. Oh yeah. I had so much anxiety. (laughs) No. Which is obviously probably what they wanted. So they, they got what they, you know, they got the intended emotion. Yeah. Damn. I love it. That was a lot. Um, Thank you for being here. Uh, do you want to plug anything before we 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, um, when does this air? Uh, Thursday. Okay. Well, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm coming to you uh, on February 19th. I'm doing a show at Zanzibar. Ooh. Uh, if you're in Los Angeles on the 30th of January, I'm doing a concert at, uh, uh, what's the name of the place? The Bourbon Room. Okay. I'm performing at everybody's, the Bourbon Room. Everybody's performing there right now. It's a hell of a venue. Okay. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful venue. Okay. But yeah, doing a show there on the 30th, big music concert thing. That'll okay. be fun. And then uh, going to Louisville to go do a, a, a concert there and- the, I'm doing these concerts where I like it's like storytelling and songs. So I travel with a band and it's just fun. It's just a fun thing to have a good time. Did with. I see that you uh, opened for like CeeLo Green or something? I did. I opened on the road for CeeLo. That's insane. I just did a show with Haley Reinhardt this past weekend yeah. and then Lisa Loeb a couple of weeks ago. And That's crazy. Yeah. I, I had a really weird thing happen during the pandemic where I started putting out music like mm -hmm. covers of songs and uh i did a couple and then the third one i dropped was a cover of crazy by oh Narls barkley and I it love that. I, we, I, was on tiktok yeah and it, exploded. it yeah it had like a couple hundred thousand uh it'd been it had been used a couple hundred thousand times or yeah. played a couple hundred thousand times and then out of thin air a influencer named addison ray yes used the song mm -hmm. uh, used my cover of crazy and then uh lizzo used it oh my god and then um uh it, it, then it just started exploding it's currently at 600 million plays oh my god that's a, that's amazing Look yeah at you. it got me a touring agent it got me uh, the ability to to do a, a tour like where i can sing and and i can perform and i started i started to get to work with a lot of people that i've always wanted to work with so, so it's cool it's fun it's fun and it's kind of like you know like I've been playing the piano for 40 years, yeah. you know, like, like when I was, you know, worked here, like I would sneak off and sit in the main room mm -hmm. during the afternoon and sing and play the piano. And, um, Eric Marino, a, a comedian mm -hmm. saw me doing that. And, uh, and then he was like, Hey, you should audition for the Shrek musical. <laughs> and you and got I it. I was like, yeah, whatever. You're you like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm a comedian. Oh, I'm a comedian. I'm just a comic. You I know? play the piano. It's something I'm hiding. Yeah. Like I, I, re well, because yeah. back then if you had more than a skill yeah. as a stand up comedian, it was looked at as mm -hmm. kind of like, you're not like a real comedian. Yeah. If you are also an actor, you're mm -hmm. not like a real comedian. Like mm -hmm. there were, the vibe was so bad yeah. for like doing anything else <laughs> that like in, in that changed. Thank God. Yeah. But it like, it changed enormously. And like part of like, I, I got to, run off and go do other things and still like while I was doing Shrek I was doing stand up at night awesome. you know and um stand up has led to like a lot of really wonderful things for me and it's also made me part of a community that mm -hmm. I am obsessed with like yeah. I fucking love everybody at they're, the store they're awesome like, I just came here the other night brought uh, some friends that were in town from Madison Wisconsin <laughs> oh, really? not from Madison Appleton okay. Wisconsin yeah. and uh brought them here because they wanted to see who do they want to see two ladies both Gen Z who do they want to see? Matt Rife. You bet your fucking ass they of wanted course. to see Matt Rife. John's like, who's Matt Rife? I'm like, you uh, you get him on the podcast. God. You don't understand. The most, uh, <laughs> yeah, the young <laughs> prince of this fucking business. They loved him. He just exploded on. Oh, there's so many my God. thirst traps of that man. I, I posted a photo of the two of us together. Every single comment was just like, just sweating girls, just girls sweating. Uh -huh. And then all, and I got five messages from like famous, beautiful women being like, can you hook me up with him? And I was just like, I'll add you to the list. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's, I think there's millions there's, of other people, yeah. women. And but the cool part too. is that like, 
I love like I love stand up and I love doing stand up. But coming here, mm-hmm. coming back here, specifically this club, with people walking in and like every comic it's like hugs and hugs Mm -hmm. and handshakes and conversations with people that I really care about. Yeah. And then like, you know, Tripoli was running the show. Mm -hmm. Tripoli and I used to go and run and tour together Mm -hmm. back in the day. And he was like, do you want to come backstage and come uh, introduce the girls to Matt, you know, bring them back. And I was like, okay, great. He like reserved a booth for me and took really good care of me. And, you know, like the last time I was here before that, I walked in with a girl on a date. Like we walked in mm-hmm. and uh, Jamar Neighbors was on stage and he was like, the glicks in the building. Like while he's performing, he just starts yelling that from the, from the main room <laughs> stage. It's like that kind of stuff. Yeah. It means so much to me because I love, I love this business. Mm-hmm. Like I just got to do a tv show where i got to hire comedians to be on our show that's awesome and being able to like do that yeah and, like be like we hired the sklar brothers mm-hmm. and alonzo bowden and mary lynn rice cub and uh um thune nick thune yeah. and mike black wrote yeah. on the show oh, and cool. all sorts of things so it's like i'm getting ready to work on another one and yeah. knowing that i can i can hire comics and work with them and do stuff with with the people i care about yeah. that i'm a fan of even if i'm not here every day yeah it's, it's nice to be part of a community it's just sure. one big family yeah it's like a weird messed up family yeah but it's it's it's, it's always fun you bet you know? absolutely it's always fun yeah, I know. Amazing. Oh, you want to hear one last thing yes. before we go? Because it's kind of uh, horror-ish, yes. but it's not really, I'd love but to it hear. kind of is. Um, a girl I I know through someone uh, texts me and she's like, hey, um, can I talk to you? Uh, I had an incident happen. Oh, God. I go, what happened? She goes, I was at the comedy store the uh-huh. other night and um, I stayed right till the end. And um, I went out for a late dinner with Don Barris. Ooh. And I go, well, there's a, that's something, you know, that's a, that's a choice. That's a life <laughs> choice that you've made. I mean, you understand. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, that, well, it was fine. We had a really nice time. And then he was driving me back to my car. And while he was driving me to, back to my car, um, some guy was like honking at us. And then I was honking at, we, they, we were honking at him. Mm-hmm. And uh, we pulled around the, Don pulled around the side of this, you know, some crazy guy in a car mm-hmm. and uh, rolled my window down so that he could yell at the guy. And then the guy rolled his window down and then pepper sprayed this girl in the face oh this is from a, his this car. This is an amazing story because I got to see the aftermath of that. So what happened was... <laughs> yeah, right? He told me the story. I didn't believe him. so <laughs> insane. He told me the details. <laughs> My friend just moved here from Canada. So she came to... I brought her here to the store. I introduced her. Don gets out of the car. First time she's ever seen Don in her life. He gets out, container of milk in his hand. He didn't get pe- pepper sprayed. But the pepper spray <laughs> got on the dashboard. He touched it, touched his eyes. God, Her Lord. first introduction to Don Barris <laughs> is Don Barris walking out of the car, throwing milk in his <laughs> eyes to wash it out in the lot. So now there's milk all over the floor where the comics are walking. Love it. And saying, oh, my God, I got pepper spray in my eyes. And she goes, somebody pepper sprayed him? What did he do? So now she thinks he's assaulting <laughs> people and getting pepper sprayed. He didn't tell anybody. It was the wildest, like, 15, 20 minutes. And I didn't believe that story when he told me it. But you know the you know the girl that, who got pepper I know sprayed. The girl, I know Mindy, the girl that got pepper sprayed. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. I yeah heard- she literally, he literally <laughs> rolled her window down and was like, fuck you, man. And then the guy in the car was like, oh, yeah? Pshh and just hit and just hit her in the face with pepper spray and she was like the night was going so well i go it was not going so well you're with don barris in the middle of the night you're lucky that that's all that happened i love oh don my god that is wild that you heard that side of the story i heard don's side of the story dude he he <laughs> He a is a horror movie. A legend. Oh, yeah. That's just amazing. All on his own. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, my so goodness. <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me on. Of course. It, it means was, a lot. It, it me, uh, you know what? It meant a lot that you were like, oh, my God. Hell yeah. I love horror. I would love to come on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Love it. Yes. Appreciate you. You're amazing. You too. Hey.
Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Hell yeah. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to our sponsor, FYE. You can find them in store or at FYE.com. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow Stephen Kramer Glickman on Instagram, TikTok. He's on all the things. Follow him. Follow me at KT Hetty. And we'll see you guys next week. Stay spooky. Thank you.